welcome everyone. So uh, we're going to give you a quick overview of what this is and then show you some specific workflows and how it can interface uh, with all sorts of different apps. It is both a desktop and a mobile app. And that's one of the most exciting things about it. I mean, here's, I guess, the, the precursor. Uh, I've got almost half a million photos on my smartphone, my laptop, and my tablet now, which is basically my entire photography collection. Uh, I've called it down. I've been getting rid of the bad stuff. So it used to be over half a million. Now it's below half a million. And that's actually a good thing. Like I like the fact that I'm getting to just my best photos because I've had so many pictures that I've not gotten around to processing. So it's pretty cool. So Mylio Photos connects your computers, your phones, your tablets into one network. So all of your devices can see each other. And you're able to import photos and videos from any different source, and they're put into one universal catalog. So everything kind of sees everything. So this will let you put all your stuff onto different devices. And then while you're working on those devices, you're able to see things and, you know, sort of instantly navigate through your entire photo library. So you don't have to make compromises or choose what pictures you have with you or, or what you don't. So I'm going to share my phone really quick and then I'll, I'll uh, jump in with Angela, let her show you a little bit. And uh, this is my Mylio library. So, you know, I've got all sorts of things in here, a few screenshots, because I was recently catching up on some stuff, but here we go. And you can see my Apple photos are in there. So this is my footage and stuff for my Apple camera roll. And as I start to go down, you know, here's some pictures that I took on my smartphone. And as I jump in, I can start to see things. And this is me scrolling through 25 years of photography on my smartphone, right? That's all my pictures from this past. You know, I can go back and find everything including pictures that I've scanned or that I need to organize still. And it's all there. Everything is there for my photography and I don't have to make a choice. Now, I can see things synchronized and overlaid with my calendar. I can view everything on a map and see all my geotagged photos from around the world as well as organize my current pictures. I can search by person. And so if I wanna find pictures in my library, has a few humorous things in it. Like for example, I've tagged Abraham Lincoln and I've tagged stormtroopers just because I've got good pictures of them because it's fun. But in all honesty, what's really nice is being able to see pictures, you know, being able to have Mylio photos recognize and it's able to actually go back and see all the pictures of my daughter. And when you see that question mark there, that's it saying that it thinks it's found new pictures. And you're noticing stars and labels all those stars and labels translate to any other photo tool. So I'm able to instantly find things right within my library. And it has face detection that can go all the way back to when she was a baby to we just celebrated her 15th birthday this evening. So it's great that everything's in one place and all the stuff you'd expect of folders and albums. But I want to be clear when I say folders, this is everything. So you know, this is everything in my Apple camera roll. This is everything I posted to Facebook and Flickr is synced to my phone and my tablet and my laptop. These are all my photo library at home. This is the entire of my photo library, my time-lapse library, all my scans. I'm going to be scanning pictures all summer long. I just got a new scanner. All the photos that I hadn't organized yet are right here. And so I can go in and start to see everything and get everything organized from these recent shoots. So you've got all of your stuff ready to go. And so I don't have to choose. I have fit almost half a million photos on my phone because it can synchronize just a tiny database with thumbnails or with the tap of a button, you could download the original raw file to any device. And so it just talks back to your computers and pulls those down from one location to another. So Angela, I know that you've been using this and this is that's a super short overview, but tell me you know, what you're doing with it. How is this becoming helpful to you to have all your content in one centralized place? Well, it's, it's having that centralized library that's allowed me to access my work wherever I'm at. 
So for instance, I recently had a major computer crash and I had all of my pictures backed up in what we call a vault. A vault is a device that you can designate to have a copy of your entire library. I was able to take that drive, plug it into my new computer and install Mylio and immediately all of my images started populating. I had all of my data accessible on this new computer. I got my old computer back from the shop and installed Mylio again. And it brought in my entire library to that computer as well. And from either one, I can access all my photos. Now, when I'm on the go and I have just my tablet or my iPhone with me, I can get to those photos as well. If I have a computer on at home or I have those images uploaded to one of the supported cloud services that Mylio works with, I can pull down my raw images on any of those devices. I can edit in Photoshop Express or Snapseed on my iPad. I can edit natively inside Mylio on my phone or export a full resolution image to another app on my phone and send those edits back to Mylio. And it's just open this world of fun being able to work with my images on any of my devices in a way that I was never able to before. And the fact that they all come back into a single unified library, I know where to find them and I can get to them. Uh, in the past, I had some images in Apple Photos. I had all of my professional images in Lightroom and then a handful of folders that were scattered around on different devices that weren't really attached to anything. They're all in one place now. And it just makes photography that much more fun. So uh, Mylio Photos offers duplicate detection and there's really three types of duplicates. Right now, Mylio Photos is tackling uh, the most common type of duplicates, and that is files that end up being in multiple places. So, you know, I mentioned that I have a lot of devices in my library. Mylio Photos lets you connect an unlimited number of devices. So I have an office and a home, and I work on Mac and PC. So this is the computer I'm on right now, my Mac Studio, and it needs 11 pictures. So it needs to download 11 pictures from a couple of my devices that currently might not be running. Or if I can click here, I could see exactly what photos it needs. So it's got a couple of pictures it wants to pull down from, looks like my smartphone maybe. So it's gonna connect and grab those. And I see that it's gonna pull them down. But I've got a PC, my Mac mini, my laptop here. If I close the laptop, you know, and it goes to sleep, you'll see that that machine's gonna gray out when the machine's not on. So it's seeing everything on my device. My phone's currently running. Let me go ahead and quit Mylio and the app will actually disappear. So you can see how your devices come online and offline. Well, what happens as you start to consolidate all of your pictures from all these places is you end up with multiple copies of the data. So that can include copies that maybe you posted the picture to Facebook and Flickr, plus you still had it on your hard drive, or you import a memory card more than once. Well, what happens is, is Mylio has several ways that it will try to detect duplicates. So for example, if we pop in a memory card that has pictures on it, one of the things it's gonna do is try to exclude duplicates when you import. So I'm sure you've popped a memory card in more than once, and this will let you do that. Now, here's something that's really cool. And Angela, I, I wanted people to kind of pick up on this one because it took me a while to wrap it around. I could be working on my laptop and target a hard drive folder on my computer at home, which means that it's gonna be on my laptop at the hotel, but also it's gonna instantly back up to my home computer, even though I'm not at home. So have you done any of this? iPad too. Go ahead, tell them what you're doing there. <laughs> so I have an iPad Pro and I can hook up a card reader to that iPad, I can do the import from my iPad. I can target that folder on my home computer, on my Drobo, where I keep all of my images. It'll bring those files onto my iPad locally and store them there temporarily and then offload them to my main drive and then keep just either a smart preview or a thumbnail so I can still browse it, but it clears that space off of my iPad once it has a connection. Yeah, so you see here, like if I wanted, if I was working remotely, I could say, oh, go to my main photo library, make a new folder and import that. And it's on my local device, but it's also gonna, as soon as it has an internet connection or when I get home, it will start downloading and transferring between all my devices. 
So, and Angela, you talked about a vault. A vault is just a drive that has everything. So Correct. I, I'm using Amazon Drive as a vault. And um, while this isn't in every country, if you've got Amazon Prime, you get unlimited photo and JPEG, raw and JPEG backup. And then I just plugged in three big hard drives. And so I'm kind of paranoid. This means that I would have to have three total hard drive failures besides my main hard drive failure for me to lose data. So that's a, I don't know, I guess after, you know, for each five years you've been taking pictures, having one more level of safety net is okay. So <laughs> how many, how paranoid are you with your pictures at this point? Um, I mean, I have my, I have a vault. I have a time machine back up the backs of my entire computer and all my connected drives. And I have Backblaze, which is a cloud backup. In addition to having a vault on Amazon Drive, <laughs> so. That's fine. I'm doing the same thing. Really paranoid. <laughs> Not as paranoid as you, but you know. That's okay. That's You'll get there. <laughs> You're younger. So there was a couple of questions related to this that says, first, well, that means your home computer needs to be on, right? Question mark. Well, it depends. So because I have a vault on Amazon Drive, I don't. It means that if I want to access things, it can grab those right off of the Amazon Drive when I need it and pull it down. But not everybody wants to use cloud storage. So cloud storage is totally optional. Milio works with um, Amazon Drive. It works with Microsoft OneDrive. It works with Google Storage. And later this summer, it's supposed to start working with Apple iCloud storage. So you can use any of those storage places as vaults. And But you don't have to put everything on a vault. You could put just your best stuff. So if you wanted to only, say, put your five-star images in the cloud, you could say, oh, go ahead and put my five-star photos on that vault. And, or only put photos that I've labeled blue on the vault because those are the ones that I'm actively working on for a project. So you can be super specific. So now when I apply change, only my five-star photos are gonna go to that OneDrive and you see it instantly starts syncing to OneDrive and it's uploading my best photos, my five-star photos to OneDrive. So now they're also backed up and it's there. And that OneDrive was just the one terabyte they give you with your Microsoft Office plan. So I have a Microsoft Office account. I get a terabyte of cloud storage. It's going there. It's that simple. So you're in total control of where things go. So if you don't want to use cloud storage at all, then yes, leave your home computer on, which is no big deal. I leave it running all the time anyway, so I can grab stuff off of it. It's actually harder on a computer to start up and stop than it does to just let your computer be plugged in and go to sleep. Monitors go to sleep, the computers go to sleep, it's low power mode. It actually uses less power than starting the computer up and shutting it down. So it's just totally fine to leave it running uh, and it comes in there. Now, there was a question about the deduplication. So when you scan for duplicates here, find duplicates, it's looking for exact duplicates, meaning the same resolution in the same picture, but they don't have to have the same name. Uh, they could have been renamed. What it looks at is the date, the camera ID, the resolution, and everything else. Now, later, they'll add other tools for cleaning up similar. But here, I've got three copies of the same picture. You know, and here's others. And what happens here is when you check auto check, you can decide what's it going to keep. Hey, favor the ones that I've edited. Favor ones where I've added metadata like XMP. If I've rated an image, keep the higher rating. Go ahead and keep my labels or keywords, right? All of that stuff. Then you can choose to delete them or move them to a new location. But when you delete them, it will actually merge the metadata together. So if you were, maybe you rated one, but made changes to the other, it'll actually consolidate all of that information into the file again when it cleans it up. So Angela, I, I won't put you on the spot, but if you're willing to share, I know that when I deduped my library, mm -hmm. I had about 20% waste. So my uh, 11 terabyte photo library dropped down to just under 10 terabytes uh, mm -hmm. after I cleaned it. I'm like, okay, that was a waste of disk space. I didn't need that. <laughs> have you deduped your library yet? Not fully. I still have a little ways to go. Um, I did an initial pass through um, when deduplication was first available and I cleaned up 
several hundred gigs. Um, I have a few other folders that I need to put in there and run deduplication on to make sure I'm not missing anything because I did a rebuild of my library a few months ago. So I've, I'm still cleaning some of that stuff up, but um, I'm also finding some stuff that I had pulled off of my iPhone and pulled into Lightroom that was still in my iPhone photos library. So some of those are showing up as duplicates. So I'm going through and making sure I'm keeping the, the right one that I wanna keep of those. So it's a work in process. And we do have a few questions in the, um, in the chat, in the chat actually from Robert Hoff. Yeah, go for it. And okay. So says one be able to let's see, will one be able soon to access full resolution files on a, con a connected SSD Mac, iPad, or iPhone. You can do that now. Apple is starting to support, uh, SSDs being attached to the iPad. Uh, they're unlocking that right now. There's some limits as to what it can do. So Milio can import from the uh, SD card reader. So you can absolutely plug into your phone or an iPad, a memory card and capture. Um, as far as Milio being able to see the SSD, Apple just updated a couple of things for that. And so that's supposed to be coming from Milio towards the end of the summer, I think, uh, where you'll be able to use an external storage drive with your SSD, uh, with your iPad, Robert. So that'll happen. So you can do memory cards, um, but seeing it, you can go into the files app and then Milio can access some of that, but um, Milio doesn't see it. But let's talk about the iPad for a moment because um, I love my iPad and I don't know if you, you know, I, I used to not be a giant iPad fan. I thought, okay, iPad's cool, but not a real machine. And mm -hmm. I've started using mine more and more one, because the display is beautiful and it's got internet connection all the time and it's lightweight with incredible battery life. On my iPad are all my pictures, okay? Here's that same almost half a million photo library, right? With videos, everything else. And I've got smart previews of every single image. So that's a time-lapse sequence. So let me just go to a, a recent shoot. And Angela, what's the benefit of a smart preview? What can you do with it? So a smart preview, um, it takes up about 5% of the size of your original photo, which means it's going to be a lot more space efficient. You can fit a lot more photos on a device and it carries with it raw data. If you're working with a raw image, it essentially makes a small DNG that you can print up to a five by seven, you can share on social media, you can edit it within Milio and have access to that raw data. And when it syncs back up to all of your other devices, all of those edits will come across and affect the results when you look at your, um, your original as well. Um, but it's non-destructive, so your raw, raw image is protected. Yeah, so I, I hope you guys could see there, like this was the Lincoln Monument, uh, Lincoln Memorial, and, uh, you know, when you shoot this, you had a chance to visit this when you came to DC, Angela. I the did. lighting's a little challenging. It's a beautiful place, but there's huge <laughs> dynamic range, right? Like there's this yeah. big, bright alabaster statue of Abraham Lincoln with spotlights on it, with these moody shadows around it. So I pretty much always shoot this HDR, but this is not the original RAW file. This is the smart preview. And I'm just using Milio's native tools but that's gonna synchronize with the full quality raw file. Or if I want it, I could just download and it will swap it out for the full quality raw file by grabbing it off the web or off my computer at home and it will intelligently swap it. But those smart previews are 5% the size of the original and they're all that you need for social media or slideshows or making a print. So now I've got the full Sony raw file. So if you look there at info, you'll see it swapped it out and that's the full Sony 47 megabyte raw file swapped out seamlessly on my device. And with the tap of a button, I can go to any other app on my iPad. So if I wanna open it up in another application, I'm handing off that raw file to any other app. There they are. I could you know, go to Photoshop Express. I can come in here and say, oh, I want to use Darkroom. I want to open this up in Perfectly Clear. I want to go into any other app. It's all there. And you can also share from other apps back to Milio, and it's backed up to your library. But look at that. Every single app that you have in your iPhone that can open a picture, it can hand off to. So I just love walking around with all my photographs, like not having to choose 
oh, I, you know, like here's a photo shoot that I just didn't have time for. But I can also take those edits and just copy them and then go to another picture and just paste that edit and reuse it. So it's a totally non-destructive editor. And then you can share and post to social media or send to clients, you can watermark. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful to have raw editing on your phones and tablets for pretty much every major camera. Yep. So how are you using your mobile devices now, Angela? I find that I'm doing a lot more work sitting on an airplane. I'll just take out my iPad and rate pictures and go through and tag and cull because I have everything with me. So all those photo shoots that I'm behind on, I can just jump in and work with and catch up on, you know, shoots that I never got around to. I do that. And I'm having a lot of fun pulling down the raw images to my iPad and working with them in apps that I never played with before and seeing what they're capable of and coming away with some really great results. Um, it's, it's just pure fun. Yeah. And I mean, you have everything guys. So that's, what's really cool is that you are working with a small raw file. And so if I go in here to the device, so you can just see it, I, I want you to understand how much we're fitting on the iPad. So there it is. And if we look here at the info, you can see for the device storage, it's using, wow, look at that, 740 gigabytes. And that's because I've downloaded a whole bunch of actual raw files, but you can control. And so I've got a mixture of full quality files and everything else. And what's really cool is that you can decide what's on your device. So if you wanna have full quality files because there's something you're working on, you can just jump right in and say, oh, I wanna work on those pictures from Atlanta and just tap and say, give me the full quality file. And now it's instantly syncing to this device from my home computer, the full quality files. And that could be your tablet, your laptop or anything. You don't have to leave your pictures behind. So it's pretty cool. And you can see right in the corner there, it tells you exactly what's happening, that you know it's pulling those files down and syncing them to the device. So we have a really good question from Gregory Young. He says, how would this work if someone on a limited data plan for internet uh, has a limited data plan for internet connection? This would be a huge data transfer. Now, if you're uploading to the cloud, absolutely. It's a ton of data to be transferring. I believe though, Rich, you don't have to actually have a connection to the external internet, you can have your local home Wi-Fi oh, yeah. set up and basically peer to peer, right? Yeah, yeah, everything just works over your network. So you don't have to, I'm not using cellular data here. So if you're remote, you could be on one Wi-Fi network and your computer can be plugged in at home and you're just using Wi-Fi. You know, you can control how much cellular data it uses and you can turn cellular data off. But when I'm at home and I just say sync, or I want all the previews, it's doing that all locally. It's not going to the cloud. It's just my computer at home talks to my device. So the two can see each other on the, any network from one network to another. So you don't have to use cellular data. You could be on one Wi-Fi network talking to another device at, on your home network, and it's absolutely fine. Now, what if his home network has data caps? So if there's true internet data caps, but you're not going to the internet, one device just talks to the other device. So you don't even need an internet connection. They're just seeing each other over the network at home. So they're just talking one device to the other device. Awesome. Yeah. Um, now there's some big changes in the way that the new Mylio Photos handles iCloud photo library images. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Robert's asking how sure. it's changed. Sure. Well, let's talk about that, you know, that concept of all your pictures, all your devices all the time. So iCloud is one part of that, which is if you're on a Mac, you're using iCloud. And so what happens here is that they talk to each other and see things. So on my iPad, for example, um, I have an iCloud photo library. It's also on my home computer and it's on my phone. Well, if you've ever tried to make that work with other devices like Windows devices or other things, it doesn't work really well. So now when you are on your device and you've added iCloud and you just say, hey, add Apple Photos, what it does is it does it. I've already added it to mine, but it just appears in a folder. So here's Apple Photos. And so if I take out my smartphone and take a picture, 
it's going to come into all my other devices because it sees it. And so, you know, here's, I was just, you know, playing with the video camera the other day and I was wanting to just experiment with some of the video, you know, there it is. And I was at my daughter's birthday party and I was capturing some pictures at her party, you know, same thing, flip, 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 flip. There we go. And so there was a birthday party. They're instantly synced to all my devices and backed up. You know, we were in Washington, D.C., and I was using some third-party apps to do long exposure. Well, now they're all backed up to my photo library. So it's now in sync. So if you take a picture on your iPhone, it's automatically synced up with all your other devices, and everything automatically downloads without duplicating storage. So Milio can see your iCloud photo library, and... If you don't have everything synced to your device, it works the same way. So if you needed, you know, this is a live photo here, but if I needed the original, I could just tap a button and tell it to download the original, you know, and there's all the edits. So everything comes across. So we went to see the Beatles love show in Las Vegas. And, you know, there I've got the full quality picture. And so it's automatically there. So whether you're shooting on your real camera or your phone, it just comes in. And Android import is very similar. So if you're on Android, you can pull in from Android as well. And you know, there we go. Let me go ahead and just discard the Apple photo edits. So you see it removed the crop because the iPhone had cropped the picture because I'd used in-camera cropping. So it restored the full view there of the scene. And now I'm working and able to totally get in there and you know recover highlights and pop the white point put a little clarity in you know and really bring out that detail and we just had wonderful seats i, I love this show but you can see exactly how you edit it and then i can do any cropping or deliver and you know once i'm all set tap the button and it's ready to share so you've got access to everything, whether that's iCloud or not. So it's a nice integration. So besides iCloud, you can import Flickr and Facebook as well. So you can connect your Facebook account or your Flickr account. And so that's what's happening. But to finish the Apple Photos one, under the hood, if I show this as a container, you'll see here's my iPad. And these pictures came in from the iPhone. And these came in from my laptop. And this came in from my desktop. And this came in from my work desktop because those devices were where the pictures happened to be downloaded first or were seen first and it was detected. But to your view, there's everything. And if you get a message, like let's say, and somebody posts a photo that you wanna share or save and you're allowed to, or somebody sends you a, a photo and a message, you could just tap it and save it and share it to Milio. So anything that you see that you wanna save or capture uh, and you wanna grab it, you can just share that right back and put it into your library. So lots of questions. Um, <laughs> yep. So Danny's asked a question, I asked him for some clarification. So thank you for typing in some clarification, Danny. Um, Rich, if you wanna share your screen again and pull up the um, either on your computer or on your iPad, uh, Danny would like to know how to find where his pictures reside. So if we look in the info panel, we can find the file name. Sure. And you can even change the file name. And you can also right click on an image um, if you're on a computer and say show in external. If, that, if it's on an external drive, that'll take you to one of your vaults or to an external hard drive where that photo's, where that photo's original lives. Or yeah. if you say show in finder or explorer, it's going to show the local copy on your local computer. And it says, okay, you know, this is telling me about the picture. And with a right click, I can see it in the finder or on the drive that it came from, right? So it'll take you there. But you don't necessarily have to go rooting around because you have the ability with any picture to just say open with. So instead of having to reveal the file or navigate to the file, you can just tell it where you want it to open up and say, oh, I want to open that in Photoshop or I want to send that to Lightroom. Angela, do you want to show your Lightroom workflow? Yeah, and there's actually a question about Lightroom that's up next. 
So you guys are seeing my Lightroom library or my uh, Mylia library, not Lightroom yet. So the question that's in uh, the Q&A is, are there any issues with Lightroom managed photos? So I have been a Lightroom user back since version one. I have a massive Lightroom catalog that I have on my personal computer. And for me, one of the big limitations with Lightroom Classic is that it isn't easy to share a catalog between multiple devices, multiple computers. And that's one of the places that My Leo Photos has come in and filled a gap for me in that I can get to all of my images on any computer that I'm using. And especially now that I have multiple computers that I use for work, being able to get to my photos on any of those computers is really exceptionally awesome. So the computer I'm using right now is one that I use primarily for work. I have my Lightroom library for all of my images on my personal laptop that's in the other room. So the Lightroom library that I have up here today only has a couple of images in it that I brought in earlier just to test and make sure things were working properly. But if you have an established catalog, you can have Mylio Photos and Lightroom pointing to the same folder of images. Now things you're gonna wanna watch out for to make sure you don't corrupt your library or end up with missing images. If you delete photos in Mylio on any of your devices, it's going to delete it from your file system. So that means that when you go back into Lightroom and you think that photo is still gonna be there, it's gonna show that image is missing. So Mylio does directly control your file system. So if Mylio and Lightroom are watching those same folders, you wanna be careful at how you're manipulating things like deleting photos, changing file names and things like that. But it's not wanna... casual. Like if you go to delete something, it's gonna be like, you're about to delete things, are you sure? Exactly. And then it puts it in your system trash where you have to actually empty it. So it's a three-step process to delete something. You won't accidentally do it. Right. But it is it is worth knowing that it does, if you delete something on your phone from Mylia Photos, it's going to delete it from all of your Mylia, from your entire, all of your Mylia devices. Um, now, when it comes to editing things like metadata and adding keywords and changing dates and things like that, those things will sync back up to Lightroom because Lightroom can read XMP files just like Mylio can. So all of that metadata that gets saved in that sidecar XMP can be read by Lightroom or a variety of other photo editing applications. So a lot of the work you do in Mylio works with other stuff. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, because I, lo I love using my tablet or phone to call and rate and edit and then everything else shows up. So if I'm using another tool, my stars are there, my keywords are there. Uh, Mylio is amazing at face tagging and GPS tagging and all of that stuff shows up in other tools because it just uses standard metadata. There's nothing proprietary about Mylio's data. It uses all standard IPTC metadata, which is great. I'd like to walk through a couple of different editing scenarios. Um, in addition to taking photos, I really love editing them. It's a lot of fun and I use a lot of different applications. So historically Lightroom has been my home base, but I use a variety of plugins. I use Photoshop and I like to have the, all of those available to me and they, they work wonderfully with Mylio Photos. So I'm gonna start with some images that I captured in Sedona and specifically a day trip we took to Jerome, which is this really cool town way up on a hill. You just scroll down here and get to these images. And it's a, it's a place that has all sorts of rusty cool stuff, kind of ghost town-ish. Um, let's take this photo here and I'm going to show you one way that you can do this. So I'm going to work with an individual image. I can go up to photo and choose open with. And anything that I have installed on my computer as far as edit editors is available in this list. If I'm not seeing it, I can choose other and navigate to that application on my hard drive. Um, for those of you who like using Skylens products, you can see I have Luminar Neo and Luminar AI installed. If I click one of these options, it's just going to open up my raw file directly into that application and I can edit it and then save a JPEG or a TIFF back to my home folder. And that image will live right alongside my original raw. I can also open in Lightroom Classic and I can open in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is actually go to other and I wanna open this in Photoshop. Now, the reason I'm going for Photoshop is I actually want to get to Adobe Camera Raw. So this is an interesting workflow for those who are wanting to use the tools that they are familiar with in Lightroom but don't necessarily wanna put things into a Lightroom catalog. And this gives you all of the same options that you have in Lightroom. So I can go ahead and let's just quickly do an auto tone and maybe pull the exposure down a little bit, do a little bit of clarity. 
All right, that's good enough. This isn't like a great picture, but I think it's kind of a fun one. This was, like I said, cut in a ghost town, the cut out of the tooth and that drill, it's kind of ominous, kind of fun. So from here, I can go up to this export and I can choose it this kit. In this case, I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. I'm going to keep my original file name and I'm gonna add the suffix of underscore display. And this is gonna do something really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and then switch back over to Mylio. We're gonna give it a moment to refresh. And depending on the size of your library and how deep your file system is, the refresh rate can be a little bit slow. So sometimes if you click out of a folder and then come back, there we go, it, re it refreshed. And now I'm seeing my edit. And if you notice over here on the right under the file name, here's my original file name. Here's my original raw CR3. I now have that JPEG display copy and my XMP sidecar file. If I take a right click here and go ahead and show this in, let's go to external. It's gonna pull up here in my file system. I have my raw file completely preserved and I can go back to that raw file anytime that I want. I have my display copy with my edit and the sidecar um, XMP file. So that's a little bit about what that does if you work with an individual image. And, and, you and, that, and that works with any photo editor, not just Lightroom. Exactly. You can edit in any other app and just save it back and have it stored next to the original. You can do it with a separate file name so you can see both photos separate and side by side, or you can add this under, underscore display and Mylio will automatically stack them. So that's pretty fun. What I'm gonna do from here is I have a few pictures that I've already flagged as ones that I want to edit in Lightroom. So I'm going to go to my filter and over to flags and find the ones that I added a flag to. Now I've already worked with this first one here with the tooth. So I'm gonna grab everything from this image here, hold down the shift key to grab the last image. And then I'm gonna go up to photo and open with Lightroom Classic. And what this is doing is downloading all of my original files to this local machine. So I have access to them to edit them in Lightroom. I'm gonna to choose to add them to my library from there. And to just location. put a pin on that, Angela, cause this is something like you're in your own house. So you could have easily stood up and walked over to that other machine, plugged in a thumb drive, rooted around and find them and then dragged them in. But this also would have worked if you were visiting your office in Seattle versus being at home in California. Absolutely. And while I did do this from my own home network, it wasn't from a drive that was physically attached. When I was in the other room on my other computer, I was able to pull down images using Mylio's local network connection, grab those originals to that machine and do the same process with my other Lightroom library. So that was, that was pretty cool. So from here, I wanna make sure we just know we add these images and then choose import. And it's going to create a new folder here in my library. Yep. And, and, and so, and, and one of the things I'll point out here related to this, because Muriel, I was asking a question, well, what happens if I download RAWs to one device, you know, and then I no longer need them? Um, you'll have a machine that you say is a vault or a drive and you, Mylio will keep reminding you until you have a vault and, a, you know, two places where everything exists, but you can turn off or clear your cache on your local devices. You can flip a folder from originals back to previews and it will clear it on that device, but it doesn't throw away the original files. In fact, Mylio even has a safe delete feature that if you accidentally delete things, it'll go, oh, let me pull that off of the vault and restore it. You could turn that off. I actually do because I'm pretty meticulous with my file management, but the default is on your devices like tablets and phones and laptops, you can pull them down and get rid of them all day long, but they're still going to stay on your hard drive. So you don't have to worry about throwing them away. Yep. All right. So back to these images, let's go ahead and do a quick edit here. You'll notice that all of these are bracketed series. I like to do HDR. So that's one reason why I might bring several images that I want to process over to Lightroom because it's really easy. I can go ahead and select a series of brackets, do a right click, photo merge and make those into an HDR. And that's gonna create a merged file. So you can see that really cool dusty room with all the little accoutrements in there. I really love how 
old dusty craggly things look in HDR. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit merge. And once that's completed, I'm gonna jump back over to Mylio. And you'll see right now, if we look here inside of Lightroom, it's created an HDR DNG file. If I go back over to Mylio, give it a moment. I believe, again, like I said, sometimes you have to go out of a folder and then back in, but it will bring that DNG file over here into Mylio. It might be because I have this filter on. Let's go ahead and select that, hit clear. Oh, I've got to scroll all the way down. At any rate, it will come back in. It just takes a moment for Mylio to rescan that file and bring in the edits. While we're waiting for that to happen, I'm gonna go back over here and do a few more edits to this DNG file. So I'm gonna click over to the develop and I'm going to pull those highlights down even further and maybe bring the exposure down overall a bit and bring up the shadows a little bit more, add some clarity. And you know what, this brightness over here is really kind of bugging me. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop this. Let's go ahead and make this a square. Just get rid of that overly bright area on the right. There we go. And what's gonna happen is when this DNG goes back over to Mylia, let's take a quick look and see if it's popped back up yet. It has not. It will come back eventually, I assure you. But when initially you see it here in Mylia, it's not gonna have any of the edits that I made in Lightroom. But the way we can get those edits back to Mylio is with the Mylio Lightroom plugin. And so I'm gonna go back to the library module, grab that image that I just edited, and you'll see down here in the bottom left, I have the Mylio Photos plugin with a photo stream. I grab that edited image, pull it down to the photo stream. You'll see one that I published earlier and this new photo to publish. I click publish. And what it's doing is like we talked about before with adding that underscore display, this plugin does it automatically for Lightroom and it sends back a full resolution JPEG for Mylio photos to see and we'll stack it with that DNG file. Yeah, and you, so, could take, you could take all the edits from, you know, you can spend all day editing in Lightroom if that's where you prefer to edit and then publish back at the very end of the day, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't have to be just one photo at a time. There we go, it just popped up. So there is my edited photo and you can see over here, it has the DNG and the JPEG. And if I right click on this and I show in Finder, there's my display copy and there's my DNG. Yeah. So everything, it just, it works so seamlessly together and I, I love it. It's just so cool. Yeah, so let me kind of just explain this logic really quick, the core benefits, because it takes a little wrapping your head around because Mylio does something that nothing else does. And so first up, it's not cloud storage. What it is, is a network. So it takes all of your devices and connects them. So your phone, tablet, laptops, any device you own is connected and they can all see and talk to each other as long as they have an internet connection. And if they don't have an internet connection, then it'll merge those changes together intelligently. And John was asking, what about if there's a glitch? Well, it will reconcile but all the edits it makes are non-destructive. So if you crop something accidentally or you realize you didn't mean to make an edit, it's all non-destructive, John. So you haven't lost anything. The original raw files are just preserved. So on your devices, when you don't want the original quality files, it shrinks your photos to typically less than 5% the original size. So your laptops, tablets always have a mini raw file available so you can edit on the go. So you can take out your phone, your tablet, and you get what you need. You can crop, edit, watermark, uh, do basic edits, share to any other apps. Everything stays in sync, but whenever you need it, with a click, you can access the full quality files. <clears throat> you can have as many devices, as much storage as you want, and it will see everything. There's no cap. If you choose to use the cloud, which is optional, you can connect it. So Here's an example of a typical photo library. So if you have a one terabyte hard drive, it could put on your phone in one gigabyte of space, thumbnails and a full catalog of everything. So a five terabyte hard drive will take up five gigs on your phone. If you want those pictures to be editable, where you can go in and make changes and have full raw editing, 
then one terabyte gets shrunk down to 45 gigs. So this is why I say it's really easy to fit on your laptop. And Mylio has an auto optimized setting. So we can just grab what you're recently working with, or you can go folder by folder or set rules like all my four stars and five stars should be downloaded at full quality. So you can go in and organize it. But on your main computer or on your main drive, you just have everything. So it's pretty simple. Additionally, the next major benefit that Angela and I were talking about was that idea of not losing your stuff. So Mylio lets you connect multiple backup drives and it automatically creates backup copies so that if something were to go wrong or you lose a device, it's still backed up. So that's that idea of sync. So when you add devices, it'll back up. So that could be a hard drive, a cloud service, a NAS, another device, a phone, a computer. It just starts syncing and backing up. So if I were to heaven forbid lose my smartphone, I'd be annoyed and I'd have to buy a new one, but I wouldn't lose any of the pictures on it. If I had my laptop stolen out of my hotel room, all of my pictures on it would still be backed up to my computer at home. So what happens is the sync panel can show you exactly what's going on on all your devices and lets you know, you know, and transfers data and lets them all talk to each other. So you can see exactly what's happening and how your backups are going. Then this is the part that I'm gonna let Angela show you some of the coolness on, how easy it is to find pictures. So Mylio has search tools that other apps don't have. So you can search across everything all at once. You can search by data. So for example, you know, I'm seeing all my devices when I search. So I'm seeing every picture on all my devices and hard drives in one search. Doesn't matter if I'm not at home, I can see everything. Additionally, you can actually go into your library and search by camera or lens or anything else by place. And with just a click, get to every picture that you took on that camera or lens. So if you say, oh, I really wanna just find all my drone photos, it doesn't matter where they are, you can find all your DJI drone photos or everything you shot on your new EOS R because you want to show people just those pictures. You can search by person. And later this summer, they're going to make this easier. But Mylio has a whole search language that's a little bit like doing Google searches right now, but they're designing a new tool. So it's all WYSIWYG. And so you could say, in this case, search for pictures of these two people. And it found it across the whole library. And you can search by text. So, you know, if I say search, it actually read the sign. If I say search, it searches inside the PDF. So if I need to find a release form or I've got a document, anything else, it actually can read text. So I want to show this because this one freaked me out the other day. I'm like, really? And, and then I'll let Angela do her thing and show you some cool search examples. But I did a search here in my library. And I searched for the word clock. And, and I just said, oh, I don't know. Let me see what happens if I search for clock. I was typing in random words. So it found 11 pictures that had clock, okay? So what did it find? Well, first off, it found a screenshot with the word clock. <clears throat> it found here the word clock in the photo there's actually the word clock somewhere on this, but on this one, it was really subtle. And then it started reading the text, five o'clock here, five o'clock, uh, let me recover that there, that should be actually raw, but there we go. Five o'clock somewhere, it read the sign for five o'clock. So here's that bar in Vegas. It read, like this is a, a picture when I was staying in New York City, I'm like, wow, this is a nice hotel, and they just admit that New York City is so loud that they just give you earplugs with your room at this high-end hotel. I'm like, wow, I've never had earplugs included right next to the alarm clock. But the word clock appears in that picture. So it's actually reading the text. Here was my daughter's first clock, right? So that's just one example. And so, you know, if I search for the word prince, uh, which I can't do in an official demo, but I can show you. You know, it finds photos I've scanned that I tagged. 
it found some uh, uh, a flyer I saved. It read Prince William Park. It read the street sign there, you know, and it was able to actually recognize all of that stuff. It read this CD that I recently picked up and actually read the text in the picture. So it's pretty insane that it has optical character recognition and can read your photos, which is just one more way to find stuff. But Angela, why don't you show a few other cool things? Sure, but well, before we do that, there's a few uh, questions here I wanted to address. Uh, Tom asked, is it a subscription? Yes, Tom, it is. You can get my Leo photos for $99 a year or $9.99 a month. Uh, and, and, it, and if you ever decide that you don't want it, you don't lose anything except the ability to synchronize and use their interface. Everything is still on your local machine. And the worst thing that happens is your pictures are now consolidated in organized folders with better metadata. So if for some reason you don't like it and it has a 30 day trial and a 30 day money back guarantee. So you really get two months to fall in love. Plus if you don't understand it, Angela actually wrote the user manual, so. <laughs> True story. All right, Fran asks, where can I get the Mylio plugin for Lightroom? Uh, if you have Lightroom Classic already installed, when you install Mylio Photos, it will be automatically installed into Mylio. All you have to do is scroll down to the published services there in the left-hand column of the library module and find it there. There's instructions for setting it up in the manual. It's very, very easy. It's like three clicks. So, um, and then as, as you saw using it, it's just a matter of dragging your edited photos into that and hitting publish and you're good to go. All right. Um, Robert asks, do, uh, does Mylio create smart previews for video files? I don't think so, does it? No, MPEG-4s are MPEG-4s, but it does work with uh, the high efficiency video codec and everything else. And you've got the ability to set a limit as to how much video it keeps. And then when you tap the button, it will dynamically pull it down. Um, but if the video is already on your phone, then it just pulls it off of the existing storage. It doesn't duplicate the storage. So it's optional whether or not you're pulling down the video, uh, but it's not recompressing video files. So Robert asks, I keep my Mac on all the time. Can my iPad see the Mylio images and videos from anywhere in the world when connected to the internet? And do I have to configure my home firewall or Mac firewall in a specific fashion? So. One of the things that Mylio just added with this update is the ability to mix, and this is super nerdy, IPv4 and IPv6 networks. Because what happens is, is a lot of home networks are now IPv6, and that's a higher security network. But a lot of other networks that are out there, um, that like if you go to a public hotel, those are actually older Wi-Fi networks, and they don't have the same level of security. So Mylio now has a setting that you can enable that will automatically let your devices talk to each other, but you don't have to generally change your firewall settings. Mylio, when you set the devices up at home, automatically sets the configuration so your devices can see each other when you're on other networks. So the only limitation would be is if you were on cellular only, you would have to tell Mylio to use cellular data. But if you're on another Wi-Fi network, the two can see each other. Uh, unless there's something blocking it that the, you know, like if you're on an airplane, for example, uh, they will block you from downloading files over a certain size, just like you can't stream movies or things like that. So sometimes the internet providers or at venues will throttle their networks, but as long as that's not the case, you can see anything. So I grab stuff while I'm traveling all the time. I spend a third of my life on the road and let's just say I, I used to lug around multiple hard drives. Like I was carrying three of these in my laptop bag all the time. Uh, like I have one for backing up and everything else. I don't take any of these anymore. They literally just sit next to my computer here. And all I have is one SSD like this to back up my laptop. And I don't need to back up my pictures at all. So. All right. So let's have a little bit of fun with how you can find photos in my Leo photos. So I pulled up our calendar view. And this shows all of my images on a calendar. And there's different ways you can configure this. Automatically, what Mylio does is it looks at your images, it looks at your ratings, and a whole set of criteria, and it picks what it thinks are the best ones from any given period of time. So some of these I have rated and tagged, and others it's just picked what it thought was the best one. But so I have other images that I can go through and have populate my life calendar. But for instance, I can click here into 2022, 
and see pictures that I've taken here during this year. I can go into April and see what pictures I took. And these are a mixture of ones for my cell phone. So you can see I took a picture of my sushi and I took a picture when I was at the Lincoln Memorial and hey, there's Rich. <laughs> so uh, it's just a smattering of everything that's going on in my life. Um, and I can see all these pictures at a glance. And it's just a lot of fun to see your life in pictures. Uh, another fun thing. And, and, and before you leave that, I use that all the time, Angela, to like mix my behind the scenes cell phone photos with my professional photos so that I don't, it doesn't matter that they're in different places, I can find them. Or when I go on vacation and I've got my underwater camera, plus my regular camera, plus my cell phone and my wife's cell phone, all of those trip pictures from the trip are merged into one event. Exactly. So you also have kind of a similar thing going here with the map view. Everything that has a geotag, you can see here on my map. Um, I can take a look at when I went to Hawaii a few years ago and zoom in here. And I believe it's holding down the shift key and scrolling with my uh, magic mouse. I can scroll in and see my Hawaii pictures. I can see the pictures here I took across the US and pictures that I've taken in Italy. Um, so you can get a view of everywhere you've been and where you might still want to go. So that's a lot of fun. I've gone through and tagged so many people in my photos. Yeah, and you can do, you can search by person and other criteria. And uh, yep. right now it's not doing AI keywords, it's just relying on normal keywords, but AI keywords will come. Yeah, so that search that Rich mentioned earlier, um, where actually JC, one of our colleagues, found pictures of him and his daughter. I did the same thing for my mom and me for Mother's Day, and I found a handful of pictures of just us and sent these to her. So that was a lot of fun as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can use that to find important pictures from your life. Before you leave um, this, Angela, I think you could actually show one of Robert's questions. He was asking about if sure. I don't know the GPS coordinates for something, how can I add a location to a picture? Can you tag a photo really quick? Absolutely. So what I can do, I'm gonna close up this rating bar here and I'm gonna to switch to the map panel. And this one is- And if you wanna make that map bigger, you can click the little triangle there to split the screen of half map, half yes. pictures. Or you can just grab the line in between and drag and adjust as well. Um, but this one I wanna say, this is Mission San Luis Rey. There we go, Mission San Luis Rey de Francia. There we go. And you can see I already have a bunch of pictures that I tagged and placed there, but I can grab these images and drag them onto, and actually it was a little bit out front here. That's the fountain out front. So let's just, I think it was right about there. I can pop those onto my map, check the box to confirm. And now those all have geotags. It's that easy. You showed how easy it is to find on a map. You showed how easy it is to find in the calendar. You can find by person. Yep. Uh, any other little tricks you want to do about how, how to find pictures? Well, you kind of stole my thunder with the, um, the text recognition, but one that I found particularly fun the other day was I tagged a few images with the keyword dog when actually it was these two. And you can see there's other ones that I have tagged, um, but what really caught my eye was I'm like, okay, my bookshelf with my cat, obviously not a dog. I was like, what did, my, what did the OCR see here? How did it pull this up in the search? And I realized there is a book down here called What the Dog Saw on the bookshelf and it pulled that off of the bookshelf. And I just thought I, I was absolutely blown away, but not, so it found all the ones of dogs that I was hoping for, but it just found some other fun stuff. And just the text that it pulls up is- So amazing. I bet there's a dog on that sign. Does it like that sign underneath the bridge? Does the word dog appear on it? Yes, that's another fun one. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Clean up after your dog. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, this you know. is insane folks. It reads your pictures. So. Exactly. So lots of fun stuff you can do. If you're interested in getting into some more technical searches, um, we do have some pretty great documentation in our user manual, which is at manual.mylio.com. We have an entire chapter on finding your photos and videos. So we have some basic search things that you can do. It talks about the optical character recognition for finding text, but you can also get into refining your results and start using some search modifiers and even some advanced search expressions. Now this gets pretty nerdy. So, you know, tackle this 
And we, we know it's nerdy. I'm actually working with their user interface designer right now <laughs> to make this all button driven. So, But if you wanted to dig into that now, all of this stuff is here and it walks you through some sample searches you can do um, using our sample library, which is another cool thing we haven't actually talked about. So if you get into My Leo Photos and you're not sure what to do and you wanna play with somebody else's photos for a little while, we have a really awesome sample library. So I'm gonna close out of this search, go over to my dashboard and down to help. And there's a button here to add sample library. And what this does is it brings in a complete library and lets you see what it looks like to have a properly organized library. So there's albums, there's people who are already tagged, there's things that are geotagged um, and you can manipulate those and work with them and play with them and then when you're done, you just come back over here to the help menu and say remove sample library and it takes all of it away so you can get back to working with your own images without having somebody else's stuff cluttering up your library. It's a yep. really awesome way to learn Mylio. I don't want to do the whole import process, but I'll give you the quick version here. So you just click the button here and say, hey, I want to add stuff from this device. And this lets you navigate. And if you chose a folder like, oh, I want to uh, import uh, this folder here, these videos to migrate, and I'll say open, I can choose to copy them if I wanted, or since they're already on a hard drive that's connected to my machine, I'll just link them. But if it was a memory card, I would do a copy or a move. And now it found it, there's 230 gigs of video, and I'll say link now. And it just starts to scan it. And if I go back to the folders here, I'll see that it's going to add a new folder called videos to migrate and it's scanning that and there they are and you know it's finding clips you see they're starting to populate and so if i go in there you know what it's doing is it's scanning and indexing that and this will start to build out now videos are a little bit bigger so it's going to take a second but i could see the progress right there and look see it's importing all of those so it's going to be faster for imports because it doesn't actually have to move or copy or move anything around. So you'll be able to see everything. And so there, they're starting to come in, you know, and it's building all the thumbnails. So if I just was a little more patient, yeah, you can see they're literally just poking in there and popping in. So there's all those videos that I just imported, you know, and they're just filing in and it's scanning and indexing the hard drive and building a thumbnail preview. So you can see how quick that is. And that's with video files. Photos are even faster. And it's all going out to my other devices and we'll start syncing there too. So that's what's cool. Uh, here's that inbox that I mentioned. So like you can have an inbox on your iPad or on a hard drive. And so I can be working remotely and say, oh, import to my main hard drive at home. And it will import to that inbox. It's still going to be on my local computer. Oh, I don't know if you saw that. I love this feature, Flutter. This lets you review the content of something. You just drag your finger over it on the iPad or on a touch mouse, and you can actually see everything inside of a folder uh, with just a flutter. You can just drag through it and get familiar with what's inside that folder without even having to open it, which is really cool. A few really good questions we still have hanging out here. Um, Fran is asking about changing dates on scans. Can you show the yeah. date picker real quick? Sure. And I've got some scans, so that's perfect. So awesome. when you scan in pictures, you don't have metadata. Um, you, you know, you really, you, you generally don't have any of that information. So for example, uh, I'm going to be good here and do something that's easy. This is my wedding day. And I've not been married so long that I've forgotten the actual wedding day. So this is easy. So <clears throat> what I can do here is click and I'm going to say, hey, let me set that. So the date picker is really versatile. So you could adjust this timestamp. You could assign, if you don't know the time, but just a day, you can also say, oh, I don't know, but you know, here, so let me do some I don't know, right? So I know that these pictures here, we went to the Grand Canyon. And I don't remember exactly when we went to the Grand Canyon, but I remember kind of when we went to the Grand Canyon. So I could say, oh yeah, let me go to the season and year. My wife and I went to the Grand Canyon 
in the summer before my son was born. So that would have been the summer of 2003, save. So now those have a fuzzy date and they'll show up on the calendar. And if you search, they'll show up. But I do actually remember when I was married and I'm still married and I'm happily married and I can go in and say, oh, let me set a specific date. And so that was Saturday, January 2nd, 1999, save. And so now that's stamped in on the scans. And if you're dealing with not scans, you can also choose adjust or shift. So shift lets you say, oh, I was, uh, I forgot to set the camera and I live, in, I live in California, but I was over in Germany taking pictures. Oh, all my timestamps are off by nine hours. I can just shift everything by nine hours to accommodate for the time zone change or things like that. So Milio has a brand new date picker that lets you do all sorts of things from timestamps to general dates, like just the year or even the decade, if you weren't sure. Like, you know, I'm not exactly positive, you know, I'm going to think here, you know, okay, I'm not exactly sure when this was, but this was my dad. And, you know, I should really ask him. But until I find out, I can at least say, well, I know that this picture is from the 1940s. So safe, you know, and I'll ask him later, when do you think this picture was, dad? A few other questions. Um, I believe it was about um, GPS tagging and does it stay with the photo? So if you tag it in Milio, does it stay with the photo if you stop using Milio? And the answer is yes. It gets stored in that XMP sidecar file and is readable by any other application that will read XMP files. And so do the face people. tags, ratings, labels, or keywords. The only thing that's um, sidecar files can't understand flags. So ratings, tags, keywords, labels, um, face tags, GPS metadata, all that translates. The OCR text, doesn't translate because that's just searchable information. Um, but uh, you could then add a tag or keyword based on that OCR. What will happen to my Mylio library if I stop using my subscription or stop my subscription? So like we mentioned before, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a more organized library than when you started. Your, your files are yours. They're on your devices. They're not stuck in a proprietary file or in a cloud somewhere. They are on your devices and you have full access to them via your file system. What you lose when you pay, stop paying for Mylio Photos is the ability to access those photos via the Mylio Photos app and to synchronize them between your devices. To put, a, to put a hammer on that, everything is still on my hard drive. And if I'm moving things around or I rename files or organize, everything is updated on my hard drives. So you don't lose anything. It's all still there. It's just data on your hard drives and it's organized. So, but what you lose is the ability to sync across all of your machines and you lose like that search functionality in Milio to search across all your devices. But if you are like a seasonal photographer, Milio offers month to month plans. And when you're ready, you just turn it back on. Like for example, you know, I pay for Hulu on my iPad month to month. I only have two shows on Hulu that I like. This week, the Orville came back on, so I gave Hulu $7 so I can start watching the Orville again. When it's not on Hulu, I don't need Hulu, so I stopped paying for it. Milio is the same way. You don't lose any data. You just turn your account on or off. So if you don't need it, you can stop using it, but you don't lose anything other than access to the Milio app. So everything is there, and you can, if you then come back in the future and reactivate your account, you can pick up where you left off. Or if you stop using it, again, everything is still right there on your device. So if I said, oh, I want to get to that, and I say, where are these pictures? And I say, show me that on the Finder. With one click, there's that folder. That's my actual drive. Look, it's right there on the hard drive itself. So nothing is proprietary or moved or anything else. Um, and Robert was asking, what else does it index? So that's up to you. It works with photos and videos, but it also works with PDF files. So for example, I was starting to scan in some of my family memories and I scanned in the other day, uh, graduation. And so here's what it found. 
not only did it find my kids' graduation and it read the text on their uh, certificate of graduation from their daycare, but it actually found my eighth grade graduation pamphlet. And this is a PDF file. So I had used Adobe Scan on my smartphone and scanned in the document and it's got everything. And so you can have the PDF and then it'll go and you know open that up. And there's that middle school graduation. And so there is the PDF that I scanned in on my smartphone using it. And you know, it's actually everything. So so a couple of questions still in the chat. Does the new version of Milio capture albums from Apple Photos or only the photos? Robert albums? is only going to bring in just the photos. <laughs> Sorry, but if you import from Aperture, it will bring in the albums. Okay. So you can import albums and you can import uh, libraries, but you can import uh, libraries like that. And when you import from Facebook, uh, it is recognizing all of those albums. So let me turn off my flat view of Facebook. And uh, if I go in here and I say, show me uh, everything. And I say, show me as a container. There's all my Facebook albums. So these are all albums that I've posted to Facebook. And when I download from Facebook, it instantly pulls everything down from Facebook and does preserve all of your Facebook albums. Well, folks, we, we hope that this was exciting. Um, thank you for letting us share this with you. You could tell Angela and I are pretty excited about this. We've been working on it really hard and we're glad to have a chance to show it to you. Um, I think you guys are gonna like it. So, you know, what it really comes down to for Milio is it's gonna deliver, you know, the ability to find your pictures, to always have access to them, to keep everything backed up. And I love the ability to work from any device. So, you know, you can have your phone or tablet and organize on your phone or tablet and know that you're actually organizing your hard drive. You could plug in every old hard drive. You know, this is my summer project. I've got a bin full of pictures I'm going to be scanning. And I've got literally, let me grab it, this. This is my bin of all those little tiny hard drives through the years. That was a little two terabyte, three terabyte, and 500 gigabyte hard drives. And I'm plugging all of these in and just hitting import. And I can tell Milio to skip suspected duplicates when I import. And it will suck all of that stuff up. I literally did this the other day. I took every card wallet that I had. Oh my gosh, Rich. Okay. <laughs> That's my life. And I sucked them all up. And now just sitting on my couch on my iPad, I'm organizing and culling and picking out great pictures from trips that I'd forgotten to process, from pictures that I hadn't gotten around to. So you have all of that there. So everything, there's the ability to clean up duplicates. You can face tag. This is me editing in real time. So I crop and it adjusts, right? And so you can see that as I'm making changes, it's automatically synchronizing to the other devices. And so this is just a recording of real-time video of you know my tablet, phone, and computer all seeing and talking to each other in real time. I applied a basic color correction, non-destructive edits. It's going to update on all those other devices. So you can see the change. So again, no edits, just totally real-time video. I make it black and white. It thinks the other ones update. And now <laughs> this is me going, there, there we go. <laughs> so it's just all network traffic, but they all see each other and they sync. So it's faster than sneaker net, all in sync. This is amazing at $100 a year. So I hope you guys have fun with it and uh, check out the, the manual that Angela put together. And I think you guys will enjoy it. Cool. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, everyone. Great to see you guys here tonight.